Hello, my name is Tiago Davi Curi Buzarello. I'm a professor at the Federal University of Santa Catarina. In this presentation, I will tell you about a tutorial on implementing Kalman filters with commonly used blocks. This research belongs to a joint research I have with Professor Marcelo Godoy Simões from the Colorado School of Mines. And this presentation is for the IACON 2019, the annual conference of the Industrial Electronics Society. And this year, this conference is in Lisbon, Portugal. The outline of this presentation is listed here. Initially, I will tell you about the introduction and the motivation of this research. Later, I will describe a little bit about the background on average filters. And also, later, I will describe the common filter algorithm itself. Next, the implementation of the common filter using common blocks. And later, simulation experimental results and concluding this presentation. The motivation of this research, first because common filters are a major and widely used technology in the field of engineering. Its implementation is sometimes not trivial and usually not well explained in scientific papers because they, they assume that the reader already know and master the concept of common filters. And the objective of this paper is to present a tutorial on implementing common filters with commonly used blocks that are the sum products, unit delay, and zero order holder. And the purpose of this tutorial is to make is to present you a simple, fast, and accurate way and an easy way to implement common filters. And another motivation is because I saw some students complaining about common filters. They were saying that the common filter is difficult, not trivial, and they were not motivated to use common filters on their projects. So, initially I decided to write a tutorial for these students because common filter is actually not hard. And later, this tutorial has become quite famous here in the university. And later, we decided to write a paper to present this tutorial to the scientific community. And this is the object of this paper, to demystify the common future algorithm and show that it is not hard to use. A short background on average filters. We can find three types of common of average filters. They are the average filter, which is just the computation of an average among a set of values. Then we have also the moving average filter, which do not compute all the average of all values, but just the most recent. So let's suppose the last 100 values they are computed. And if this value is updated all the time, they are always computing only the last 100 or 50, depending on the value of n. Okay? And also we have the exponential average filter, which is similar to this one but now we can include weight on these samples. We can consider the newest value as higher weight as compared to the oldest one. Okay, so three types of average filters, the average, the moving average, and also the exponential average. And notice that they are computing the average considering three different features. The common future algorithm is this one shown in this picture. It is made by five steps. The initial, the step one is just the initial values. You define the initial values. Step two is the computation of state prediction and covariance error. They are made through these equations. The third step is the computation of the common gain, which is actually the weight of the samples. And the step four, is the computation of is the the estimative which is the output and also have here the last step which is the computation of the covariance error and this is a loop and this is the algorithm of the common filter notice that this is the input signal and in this field of filters the input signal is called measurement and the letter is zk and the output is called estimate 
which it has this variable here, the x with hat. And if we see here the algorithm, actually it may seem complicated at a first glance, but actually this is not hard. We have here this minus signal means prediction, and the hat here means actually the estimative. Okay, so the output is called estimate. Actually, it's not the output, but actually is a estimate. And here is where the input applies to the filter. If you notice this equation here, this is quite similar to an average filter. But the difference is that the weight of this part of the equation is computed from the previous step of the algorithm. In other words, the common filter is actually a moving average filter which computes and updates the weight of the samples in every iteration here. And then the, ladder, the last path here is just to compute if the covariance error is going to zero, which is the objective of the common filter. Okay. So the purpose is to take this algorithm and make implementations of common blocks. And this will be a great tutorial for people who are on their first contact with common filter. These are the blocks for the equations. We have here the initial values, step one of the algorithm, and also the matrices of the system model we have here. This is valid for a second order common filter, a linear common filter. We have here letter C as a state covariance error prediction which is the step two of the algorithm. Notice that we can clearly see here now the transposal, matrix transposal, and we can see also how the matrices are multiplied and summed. This is quite simple. Later, letter D as a computation of the common filter. Step three of the algorithm. We have here all the blocks required to make this computation. Also the inversion of this matrix here and E the computation of the estimate which is the output here we have the output and here is where it appears a unit delay to consider the prior case okay so this is used for the next loop of the algorithm because they need to know the previous output in order to compute the new common gain these are the blocks to implement the step one, two, three, and four of the algorithm. And finally, you can compute the covariance error, which is the step five of the algorithm using this set of blocks here. We also have here unit delay blocks, which is necessary in order to make a computation of the covariance error. And remember that the objective of the common filter is to make zero the covariance error. This is supposed that they are working in a steady state condition and very well. After presenting all the equations of the common filter with blocks, which makes more very simple for understanding it, we made some simulation experimental results, and we are I will present here a second order common filter implemented with commonly used blocks was verified through simulation and experimentally. In a digital signal processor, this one from Texas Instruments known as 28335. The DCP was programmable was programmed through automatic code generation in Simulink, which means that in Simulink I have all these equations made by blocks and later I just upload and convert, the Simulink converts all this simulation into code and load into the DSP. Okay, the Simulink build, load and run, converting all the simulation made by blocks into C code, and later I just see how it behaves. The simulation and the experimental results are placed side by side for the sake of comparison and also to show the efficacy of this tutorial for both simulated and experimental environments. Also, in order to see an input variable, I mean a digital variable which is within the DSP in the scope, I'm using a digital to analog converter, this IC MCP4922. Using this IC, 
plus some configurations in Simulink, I can measure on the scope any variable I want, any digital variable I want. But due to the range of the input signal, I have to make some amplitudes adjustment and offset. This is because the IMCP works in a very limited range and then I had to make some offsets and amplitudes, but this is not this not violates the information of the signal. These results here side by side shows the simulation results and the experimental results for the input, which is the measurement, ZK, and the output, which is this hat for the matrix 1.1, line 1, raw 1. They are similar, you can see here on the simulation, and also they are coincident, I mean, they are superimposed but the common filter has a filtered version of the input and here you can clearly see this here I need to do that adjustment as I told you in the previous slide I have here and they are coincident here you can see at the top a transition from the input signal and the output signal of the common filter we can clearly see here it behaves very well not oscillating and here we see the same behavior for the experimental results. When a sudden change happens in the input signal, the output of the common filter follows the signal very fast and showing no oscillatory behavior, neither unpredictable behavior. Okay, so this shows the efficacy of the common filter made by the common blocks presented in this paper. Also, just for the sake of comparison, I did the same step on a, on a digital filter made by Infinitive Impulse Response and can clearly see here that how oscillates and see and experiment results the same result. Uh, for a sudden change in the input, uh, this filter here would behave in such a way while the common filter made by blocks respond very fast and satisfactory. So, I'm showing you here that the results from simulation and experiment are really close, which makes our tutorial very useful. I have also here one another result, which is similar to the first. I have the input and the two outputs of the filter. One is the future version of the input, and this is the observed signal. It means it's the derivative of this one. So we have this term, which is the first row, first column of the output, and this is the second column, first row, second line, first column of the output, output signal of the common filter. We can clearly see here that this is the derivative of this. This is the slope, this here shows the slope, and suddenly it changes accordingly. This shows again that the tutorial is very useful either for simulation and, or, and, and for experimental verification. And conclusion of this paper, again this paper is a tutorial on implementing common future with commonly used blocks. The purpose of this paper is actually to make a clear understanding of the common future algorithm for those who have the first contact of common filters and also for those who are interested to see a different approach of the common filter. This, the common filter was implemented using blocks, conventional blocks like sum, product, unit delay, zero order holder, very familiar blocks for us. And the main objective here is to present an, a fast, accurate and easy to use implementation of common filter. I have here some acknowledgements. I'd like to thank to the CNPQ for sponsoring this research and also for the Federal University of Santa Catarina and the Colorado School of Mines. The simulation files used in this paper is freely available on my webpage. You can just go there and download the Simulink files from this tutorial. And if you have some questions, I, I'll be so glad to answer. You can also contact me through my email. Thank you so much for watching this presentation.